Good morning. I am Dr. Shri Lakshmi. I am talking about breast diseases today. Coming to disease of the breast, I am going to talk about introduction, anatomy, structure of the breast, classification, initial approach to breast problems, diagnostic workup and conclusion. Coming to introduction, breast problems are a major reason why women visit the primary health care or primary care physician. Breast diseases in women constitute a spectrum of benign and malignant disorders. The most common breast problems for which women consent a physician are the breast pain, nipple discharge or a palpable mass. And the most important thing first to learn is the anatomy. As you all know, breast is a specialized accessory gland with a mass of glandular fatty and fibrous tissue on the pectoralis major muscle in the chest wall. It is attached to chest wall by fibrous strands called Cooper's ligament. The base of breast extends from 2nd to 6th rib from lateral margin of sternum to the mid axillary line. line. The gla glandular tissue of the breast consists of lobes, lobules and ducts. The fibrous and fatty tissue surrounding the milk surround the milk producing system that is lobules and ducts. Each breast consists of 15 to 20 lobes which radiate out from the nipple. Anatomy The hormones responsible for breast development are the estrogen, progesterone and prolactin. Its blood supply is through internal mammary, axillary and intercostal artery. Venous drainage is through internal mammary vein and axillary vein and intercostal veins. Its lymphatic drainage major part is through axillary nodes, rest, internal mem intermammary and supraclavicular lymph nodes. Three lymph node levels that is axillary lymph nodes defined by, defined by a pectoralis uh, minor muscle. Level 1 include lateral and inferior to pectoralis minor. Level 2 is deep to pectoralis minor muscle. Level 3 is medial to pectoralis minor. Rotors nodes is between pectoralis minor and major. Nerves are the long thoracic nerve which supplies serratus anterior muscle, thoracodorsal which supplies latissimus dorsi, intercostal brachial, sensory to medial arm and axilla. This is the structure showing lactiferous sinus, duct, pectoralis major muscle, fascia, intercostal muscles etc. Classification is based on the pathology. It may be non-proliferative, proliferative. Non-proliferative non lesions are simple cyst and the complex cyst. Proliferative, which is without atypia, that is ductal hyperplasia, fibrodenoma, intraductal papilloma, sclerosing adenoma, and radial scars. Atypical hyperplasia may be ductal hyperplasia or lobular hyperplasia. Classification based on clinical features are mastalgia, may be cyclic or non-cyclic. Tumors and masses, nodularity or glandular, cyst, galactosyl, fibrodenoma, sclerosing adenosis, lipoma, hematoma, diabetic mastopathy, cystisarcoma, phyllodes. Classification based on clinical features are like uh, nipple discharge, breast infections and inflammation. Nipple discharge may be in dactyasia, fibrocystic disease, duct papilloma, galactoria, breast infections and inflammation. Seen in postpartum engorgement, intrinsic mastitis, lactation mastitis, breast abscess during lactation, chronic recurrence of areolar abscess, acute mastitis associated with macrocystic breast, intrinsic infections, extrinsic infections, Mondo's disease, and hydroadenitis separativa. Relative risk of invasive breast carcinoma based on pathological examination of benign breast tissue. There is increased or moderate in, moderately increased risk in atypical hyperplasia that may be ductal or lobular which is 5 times risk. Slightly increased risk with uh, hyperplasia, moderate or florid, solid or papillary, papilloma with the fibrovascular core that is 1.5 to 2 times risk. Insufficient data to assign a risk on solitary papilloma of lactiferous sinus or radi radical scar lesion. 
no increased risk in adenosis, sclerosing or fibroid, cyst, micro or macro, tacticasia, fibroadenoma, fibrosis, hyperplasia, mastitis, peridectal mastitis or the squamous metaplasia. Breast pain also known as mastalgia is the most common in young age as well as premenstrual women than in postmenopausal women. Premenopausal women, sorry. Cyclic pain that may be physiologic, usually bilateral and poorly localized, occurs in about 60% women except menopausal women on hormonal replacement therapy, often described as heaviness, swelling, tenderness that radiates to the arm, axilla associated with menstrual cycle, most severe before menstruation, has variable duration, resolves spontaneously after menses, attributed to fibrocystic breast disease, fibrocystic uh, breast changes, etiology is unknown, thought to be related to hormonal that is gonadotrophic and ovarian hormones. Breast pain may be non-cyclic or cyclic. Non-cyclic most common in women 40 to 50 years age group often unilateral usually described as sharp burning pain localized in the breast occasionally secondary to the presence of fibroadenoma and or cyst menstrual irregularity emotional stress trauma scars from previous biopsies and medications have been associated management of breast pain includes medical management pharmacological treatment that is non-steroid and anti-inflammatory drugs ocps dinosol 100 to 400 mg per day 75 percent of the women with non-cyclic pain will be symptom free side effects are weight gain menstrual irregularity acne hirsutism other treatments are tamoxifen and bromocryptin surgery has no role in the management of breast pain evaluation and management of breast pain First, we have to take history, do physical examination. If it's normal and the patient is less than 35 years, reassure no further treatment needed in 90%. If she is at or more than 35 years, mammogram is advised. If it's normal, persisting pain, 10% of the patients. Documentation of the pain using visual analog scale. Evening primrose roll oil or simple analgesics provides relief in 40 to 60 percent of patients. No relief or disabling symptoms means you can you go for denazole in selected patients. Breast masks or the cyst are the common cause of dominant breast mass, may occur at any age but uncommon in postmenopausals. Fluctuates with menstrual cycle, well demarcated from the surrounding tissue, characteristically firm and mobile, may be tender, difficult to differentiate from the solid mass. Fibrocystic breast disease, most common of all benign breast disease, common age is in between 20 to 50 years, 50% 50 of them have clinical symptoms, 53% have histologic changes, believed to be associated with imbalance of estrogen and progesterone, may present with bilateral cyclic pain, breast swelling, palpable mass and heaviness, fibrocystic breast disease, physical examination shows tenderness, increased engorgement and more dense breast, increased lumpiness, glandular, occasional spontaneous nipple discharge. Breast diseases, breast cyst, diagnostic test are the mammogram, ultrasound and fine needle aspiration. Fine needle aspiration is an OPD procedure, non-bloody fluid cyst, non, usually non-bloody fluid comes, cyst disappears if bloody fluid, surgery biopsy of, uh, surgical biopsy of cyst is required, re-examination 4 to 6 weeks after aspiration. Management of breast cyst, if it's palpable mass, aspirate FNAC to be done, bloody fluid, surgical biopsy, non-bloody fluid, if it's a residual mass, surgical biopsy, resolution of cyst, re-examine after 4 to 6 weeks, no recurrence, routine follow-up, recurrence, repeat aspiration, for further recurrence, re-examine and consider biopsy. If it's a solid mass, it's like this, it may be fibroadenoma. This is a picture of a sonogram of the cyst. 
fibroadenoma second most common benign breast lesion it's a benign solid tumor containing glandular as well as fibrous tissue usually present as well defined mobile mass usually appears between 15 to 35 years cause is unknown maybe due to hormonal influence may increase in size during pregnancy or with estrogen therapy it may be jaint over 10 cm in size excision is recommended juvenile it's a variant of uh, fibroadenoma usually between 10 to 18 years vary in size from 5 to 20 cm in diameter painless solitary unilateral mass excision is recommended complex fibroadenoma contain other proliferative changes such as sclerosing adenosis duct epithelial hyperplasia and epithelial calcification associated with in slightly increased risk of cancer breast mass may be seen in phyllodes tumor or fat necrosis Phyllodes tumor is a rapid growing one in four malignant one in ten metastasis create bulky tumors that distort the breast may ulcerate the skin due to pressure necrosis Cons treatment is to consist of wide excision unless metastasis has occurred Fat necrosis is very rare, secondary to trauma. Tender, ill defined, occasionally skin retraction, treat with excision biopsy. Other breast masses are galactosyl lactictasia. Galactosyl milk filled cyst from over distension of lactiferous duct, present as a firm non tender mass or in the breast, commonly in upper quadrants beyond areola. Diagnostic aspiration is often curative. Dactictasia found in older women, dilatation of the subarea ducts can occur, a palpable retropalpable mass, nipple discharge or retraction can be present, treatment involves excision of area. Breast mass, it may be gynecomastia, benign growth of glandular tissue of male breast due to an imbalance in the estrogen to androgen activity, may be unilateral or bilateral, common in infancy, Adolescence and adult life, pseudogynecomastia may be seen in obese individuals. Causes include drugs, chronic, uh, treat, uh, cro chronic steroids, metabolic, pubertal, hormonal, tumors, idiopathic and hypogonadism. Nipple discharge, it may be physiological or pathological. Physiological during pregnancy and lactation. Intraductal papilloma is a pathological cause or galactoria. Intraductal papilloma is within uh, benign growth within ductal system, presence as bloody nipple discharge. Excision is the only way to differentiate from carcinoma. Galactoria, secretion of milk not related to pregnancy or lactation. Stress and mechanical stimulation of breast. Side effects of drugs, for example, chlor chlorpromazine, metoclopramide or methyl dopa, hyperprolactinemia due to prolactin secreting tumors or from a secondary source of bronchogenic carcinoma, obtain prolactin level if normal simple reassurance is okay, stop mechanical stress or ingestion of drugs, treatment of prolactin secreting tumors or bronchogenic carcinoma. Breast inflammation and infections may in uh, include mastitis, uh, it's common in lactating females. Dry, cracked, fissure, areola or nipple complex provides portal for infection, usually caused by staph or streptococcal organs, organisms. Rule out the malignancy. Treat with heat, continued breastfeeding, antibiotics for uh, two weeks to cover staph and streptin, streptococcal infections. Inflammations and infections, abscess with breast swelling, tenderness and fever, breast is tender, warm and fluctuant on examination may also have purulent discharge treated by surgical drainage. Others are Mondo's disease which is phlebitis of the thoracoepigastric and lateral thoracic vein. Palpable visible skin retraction over tender extending to chest wall. Spontaneous or related to trauma. Ultrasound may be helpful in confirming diagnosis. Treatment self-limited can use Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, mammogram over 35 years to rule out malignancy. Chronic subareolar abscess occurs at base of lactiferous duct and squamous metaplasia of duct may occur. Sinus tract to areola develops. 
ट्रीटमेंट रिक्वायर्स कंप्लीट एक्सीशन ऑफ साइनस ट्रैक्ट रेकरेंस इज कॉमन मैस्टाइटिस न्यू नेट्रम बायोलैट्रल और यूनिलैट्रल एनलाजमेंट ऑफ ब्रेस्ट इन फिफ्टी परसेंट स्वेलिंग इज लेटर अकम्पनीड बाई सेक्रेशन ऑफ क्रीमी फ्लूड सिमिलर टू कोलेस्ट्रम विच इज कॉल्ड विथ मिल्क अकर्स ऑन थर्ड और फोर्थ डे ऑफ बर्थ रेस्पॉन्स टू मदर्स हॉर्मोन एक्सपोजर which may be prolactin or estrogen resolves spontaneously after 2 weeks when the estrogen level automatically falls occasionally becomes infected congenital breast disease about 1 to 5% of the population have accessory nipples less commonly accessory breast that is polymesia usually develop along the milk line most common site for accessory nipple is below the breast most common site for accessory breast is in the axilla accessory nipple in breast rarely require treatment except for cosmetic reasons now approach to breast problems is through history inspection palpation and diagnostic uh, imaging history age family history of cancer onset duration of discharge frequency trauma menstruation re- relevance with menstruation inspection symmetry skin bulges any changes in skin retractions approach to breast problems through palpation in palpation of breast axilla and supraclavicular region breast examination sitting up with arms in relaxed position both arms raised over the head heads on the hips these are the positions in which you inspect as well as examine the breast complete regional lymph node examination while patient in sitting position by manual may be done while patient is still in the sitting position useful in patient with large pendulous breast complete with the patient in supine position areas examined should extend from the clavicle superiorly to the rib cage inferiorly and from the sternum medially to the mid axillary line this is the uh, in the sitting position with hands raised and with hands on hip hands on sides axillary lymph node examination breast examination with patient seated breast in sup- patient in supine position radi radial approach vertical approach and concentric circles that is uh, complete with the patient in supine position with arms raised above the head breast exams can be accomplished with either concentric circles radial approach or vertical strip approach diagnostic work up with ultrasonography mammogram fnac core needle biopsy excisional biopsy incisional biopsy or an mri ultrasound is the first diagnostic test of choice to differentiate between a cystic and a solid mass normal mammogram at any age does not eliminate the need for further evaluation of a suspicious mass fnac for cystic lesions if lesion is completely drained the fluid is not bloody or cloudy no further evaluation is needed core needle biopsy provides a best diagnostic information for solid palpable mass which can be visualized on the usg or mammogram triple assessment of breast symptoms if any patient who presents with a breast lump or the other symptoms suspicious of carcinoma triple assessment that includes clinical imaging and pathology clinical age examination imaging us g and mammography pathology fnac and core cut biopsy confirm diagnosis in 99 to 99.9% of cases conclusion Benign breast problems account for the majority of breast problems seen in women. Breast complaints need careful assessment with thorough history and physical examination as well as diagnostic imaging. Work with breast problems can present with the oh, women with breast problems can present with the mass pain, nipple discharge or skin changes. They can also be asymptomatic. It is important to rule out the breast cancer. Thank you.